uh, based on the geometry and based on the flow speed and that has two components the superficial velocity of the liquid and superficial velocity of the gas these three parameters alone and as i showed you yesterday can give rise to very different flow patterns so as you saw that how complicated the flow patterns were what people were used to do is that just to capture the flow pattern and then try to do the modeling and those modeling were all empirical in nature so even if the book you know like uh, christopher brennan that i showed you i have a copy with me uh, they and that is a like uh, you can say used widely by a real uh, expert in this field it consists nothing but empirical relation it hardly has any cfd and most of the book up of course is devoted to the bubble all right have anybody used and blown the soap bubble in this room you know those you know you have a little tube and you dip into the soap water do that okay so if you are really expert you can blow a really big bubble and get a first prize and if you are really not expert then you will have a very difficult time and that is a multi phase flow and so what are the two phases there so the, there is air outside and what is inside all right and so where is the soap very good so that is what it is and the main effect is the surface tension and surface tension is balanced by the pressure difference across that's the simple thing there is no gravity and the phenomena that governs the radius is based on which non dimensional number hmm? weber number or weber number is similar to the motor number time something like a bond number etc but weber number is most widely famous okay so yeah yeah it depends on as i said the superficial velocity of both the liquid and this one so as i showed you one example today that if the killer problem of 1961 a lot of people have done it can give rise to very thin layer but it not and somebody asked me that question that what about if it gives it will give rise to a thin layer or a slug flow slug flow is very close to the thin layer but not identical okay but it has a big bubble so the effect is different so depending upon what your fluid is and the what your geometry is as i told you that three set of parameters and that will determine and that will determine also the numbers that are going to be important so one is the geometric parameter one is the fluid parameter and the third one is the flow parameter and that will give you the pattern so that th those are the pattern those are the charts that people use so there is no universal answer that this is what is going to happen so you know i didn't show you yesterday this one this is air and water keep things simple and this is in a horizontal pipe and this is for various different type of the pipe is now constant in this case the length is constant so what is changing here is the velocity so it's a velocity of the liquid which means that the percentage of the liquid and the percentage of the air water versus air so that percentage of the two and the area is there and the velocity of entrance and they will determine whether you have bubble of this type you can have a wavy situation which means that you have most of it is air and then you have a plug flow okay which is more like a uh, that plug with a larger bubble so it becomes a slug with a bunch of larger bubble become the plug 
and then there is a, actually a plug flow approximation that you can treat all of them in one one shot by assuming that you have a plug flow type of profile in your cushion and then you have a stratified and this is an annular flow the only difference is that you have a thin layer and then you have the uh, bunch of bubbles there and so somebody was interested in a spray and so on so you know this is basically a classification depending on various conditions okay and yesterday what i showed you were this this chart and so this is a little more complicated so you have things like annular flow which i showed you in the previous chart of course plug flow and this is the one that has a kind of a strange flow under different conditions but here the difference between the number 1 chart and the number 2 chart is what is the difference physically there is one more parameter the velocity in geometry plus the velocity plus the percentage of the liquid and the water in addition to all that there is only one more parameter which is different with the root chart the gravity so the gravity is an extremely important parameter to solve this problem which is not there before but this is a different type of gravity than buoyancy so now you know in the old days what people did is that they basically used the chart created patterns and they basically took pictures and photographs of the type that i showed you but as i told you before that these two velocities that is superficial ug and ul are very important so anybody remembers what is ul no that i know but what i'm saying is how do you define that but the area is a total area is not the area of the liquid is a total area so now this is the flux that i also showed you and so here you know when you are is reading these charts you will find that there is a rho gas and rho air and rho l and rho water so you may say that you know there are too many rho and mu so why it is there like this so this is a non dimensionalization so if we have a gas we are not dimensionalizing by air and if you have a liquid we are non dimensionalizing by water so this is basically when you are studying these charts you have to be aware of it you know because i have seen that many times people get confused that there is a air going on there is a water going on and there is a gas going on so it becomes a four phase flow i mean this is basically a non dimensional way of writing so this is the kind of chart how many of you those who are multi phase experts i have seen this chart before you have seen right and there is a hand in the back so at least there are few people who have seen this so this is how the chart is made and i showed you yesterday similar chart and this is what is called the baker map after the guy who did it so what is showing is that this is a gas based flux with some parameter and this is a liquid based flux and you can calculate these for a given pipe with various superficial velocities as input then depending on the value of the gas and the liquid fluxes you can see what pattern you will get out of those six so you will have a annular flow you will have a slug flow you will have a plug flow you will have a bubbly flow you have a stratified flow and a wavy flow so now you know if you have this picture and you do the experiment and you know from the experiment what this value is and what this value is you can calculate that what type of flow will be and if it turns out that you have a different kind of flow not this type of flow that we have put in the previous chart then you have to really examine that maybe you discover something new it's possible or it is something very different the thing is that most of the people who have done these experiment they find that this is a reasonable chart but not a perfect chart so 
there has been a lot of work in generating these kind of charts. So, these are called maps. So, there is a Dunkler map, etcetera, you know. So, the reason I told you that I am not going to spend too much time is that they are all given in the handbook and all that, and they have very little to do with CFD. <coughs> if you really want to do CFD, you can just take this and take a pipe and take ANSYS fluent and just run, run one case. So, let us you run whatever you like, you know, you take a plug flow and run the case and you can do in no time because a grid is going to be very simple. You can have a lot of grid, run time will be small and these parameters are not that bad. And then see whether you get that pattern. Okay. So, now if you get that pattern and try the other ones. And so, if you get all these patterns, then at least you have done what I told you to do before that you have reproduced the results of Baker chart, which were done you know about 50, 60 years ago by doing ANSYS. And this is a very good exercise actually. So, if you are interested in trying to do that, you can try it and see whether it works. Okay. So, the, these are simple problems, you know, they are not really that complicated. Okay. So, now the question that I have is, which we are going to discuss maybe later, in contrast to the nano flow, let us say you want to do this problem of plug flow or whatever. In ANSYS, what kind of model are you going to use? You have air and you have water, two phases. Are you going to use them as a single phase or you are going to use as a two phase? And if you are going to use two phase, then what kind of model are you going to use? Hmm? No, it's loud, loud. So, this is a good answer. So, what you do is that you will use the VOF and the stratification will be automatically taken care of. So, the method that you will use it that you will use the volume of fluid method that can account for the two phases that is simplest. So, the two phases are water and air all right or whatever gas you may have. And so, you can then use the volume of fluid method and depending on what percentage is you put in, then it will eventually evolve into some kind of a flow depending on the superficial velocity etcetera. So, that is a perfect answer actually. So, that is how you do the volume fluid, you know right now it is a mystery, but you can use that as just click here, click there and it will do it for you all right. But what is a volume of fluid? So, that is I am going to explain tomorrow with some numerical input, so that you understand this black box inside the ANSYS which is called volume of fluid. Okay. Now, if you are much more uh, uh, I mean enthusiastic and lot more time and capacity and you already have learned, you can try the level set method also, but that is much more complicated. You, you see that you are a stratified flow or you have a wavy flow, you do not, you have can have a completely full pipe. You see whenever you have a interface between air and water, automatically there will be wavy nature. You see the way the water and air are, you cannot have a flat surface. Okay. It is impossible to have a flat surface, whether it is a river bed or it is a canal, they may look like a flat surface with a very long wavelength, but to have a total flat surface with a zero wavelength and without any wave is going to be impossible. But if you take the case that only liquid is there and the rest of it you know you make it a vacuum, maybe just push pull out the air, air is automatically going to be there. 
you know that is the way it is but suppose you put in some other gas co2 all right but if you don't want to do that then the wavy and the and the stratified flow becomes almost like a free surface flow in a ocean now the stratification if you would have a pure water going in what is going to cause a stratification tell me no no you have a pipe you push in some water because of pressure gradient and then you have air automatically there and you fill it up to certain level and it will always be down because it is a higher density <coughs> right so you have a simple case and you have the flow going on because you have pressure gradient right which one no no i am saying your case it is not filled you take the pipe and you put in the water at say one quarter level you can do that air is automatically there for you you can do the experiment in your lab you have to have a pressure gradient otherwise it is not going to flow i can guarantee you that <coughs> so you put in a pressure gradient if you have difficulty you just incline it a little so it is a gravitational pressure gradient right so you have pressure gradient the question i have i'm asking you is that of course the free surface between the air and the water there is no way that you won't have a wave right the wave is a part the wave is smallest disturbance the smallest disturbance will cause a wave and there is no experiment that you can conduct without a wave because you cannot avoid that smallest disturbance that's the way it is that the smallest disturbance cannot be avoided all right so you have a little wave maybe very long wave length i was my question was that the stratification that was shown in one of the slides where does the stratification come from suppose you have to use a stratified flow how are you going to introduce the stratification the the plain water does it have a stratification you can use any velocity what is the source of stratification anybody can tell me that what is the source of stratification if you want to stratify the liquid huh? what the stratification comes from the variation in the density that is the only way you can create a density stratification so if you are doing the experiment in your lab how are you going to create that stratification in the density in the water the plain water whether it's a bottled water or it is a tap water will not have a stratification so how think simple in a ocean that we discussed yesterday how do you have a why do you have a stratification in the ocean ocean is the biggest example or the greatest example of a stratification what is the source of a stratification in the ocean it is the brine the way the brine the salt is distributed in the ocean layer from the top to the bottom is not uniform concentration or the variation the density of the water in the ocean is generated by the distribution of the salt so you can use a salt water for your experimentation which will introduce some stratification but not a whole lot but you can use a fluid which is has a nature which means that it has a dissolved fluid of the type of sodium in water that will create some stratification in the variation in the density in the vertical direction all these other ideas that you have compressed air and this and that they are may work but they are not the one they are simple ideas because i am not aware of how to do that
Yeah. Yeah. They use a compressed air. Okay. Okay. No, I mean, I am giving you the analogy with the ocean. That is the easiest way to do it. But I am not saying that the compressed air or such many other techniques may not work. But I am not aware. I mean, I personally don't know. It may work. I was Banerjee is a real expert in this. So he must know that it works. There may be other way to pass stratification also. Like in case of river, the water is pure. Pure means it doesn't have any salt. But in the river, how does this certification come in? So in the river, the certification comes in because the river water, the top one doesn't have much. But the bottom one always has some gravel moving around. So all the slurry that you have, it creates a very bad stratification. So it depends on, you know, if you have river, you know, with 2 meters or 3 meters, 10 meters deep. Then the earlier part of the layers will not have that much stratification. And also it doesn't have that much wave. You know, but river is always flowing under gravity. So the important thing I keep repeating, you know, which is very important, that first you have to understand what problem you are solving. And then how are you formulating that problem experimentally or in numerically? And the, what is the physics to capture that problem? And then what is the, after that, which code is going to capture the problem? So like he mentioned that VOF is good enough and I agree with him. Now if we want to have a stratification, then how do we specify this stratification in the code? Then you will have to put in something for the density. Yes. You can, but you will have to do some UDF, and some additional work. So there are all these extensions have been made, but they may not be in the basic fluent. So I am not really up on it, but they keep on adding this version, that version, so it might be there, but I am not totally sure, you know. And now that becomes important in the case of the hydraulics, hydraulics power. So as I said, you know, that there are all kind of maps. And so you can pick up any of them and go back home and assign to your graduate students, you know, particularly all these professors, you know, they are like me, I don't think they do any work, right? So anyway, but you can find good graduate students from MN and IT, you know, hire them, right? But if you take a map, the one that I showed you, and can generate this map by ANSYS Fluent, that it will be a publishable work great value, okay. It will, and you will find that what is the problem with this map. There are a lot of problems with this map, but it is a good, you no, know, it is a good chart. Good means it is reasonably good. These boundaries are, you know, fluid. Fluid means, you know, that they may change once you use the tool or some other. And that will give you a really uh, very good experience that all those uh, flows like churn flow and etc. when they occur and when do they uh, become turbulent, okay. So this chart is the one that I think you can focus on and then there are a lot of charts and the handbooks which are just improvement of this, all right. So I am not going to go over that because, you know, there is not much to belabor. And if you look at it here, again, these are other charts with the same thing. So this is the flux of the gas and the flux of the liquid. Okay. And this lambda and, you know, other parameters are there written before, okay. Now the only other thing that is very important in this case, particularly if you have a vertical pipe, that you have the force, this is due to the acceleration. Okay. All right. And this is the force due to gravity. So gravity is important in a vertical pipe or pressure difference. And this is the friction. Okay. Now the friction modeling in a case of uh, uh, flow or multiphase flow is very difficult because it is a function of 
so many parameters. Uh, of course, you know, the roughness is one of them. But whether it is a slug flow or it is a plug flow or it is a rippy flow or it is annular flow, the calculation of friction is not that straightforward. Even by using fluent, because you will have to use too much grade and also you will have to make a decision whether, like if it is churn flow, you will have to decide a turbulence model. Because you cannot compute the churn flow without a turbulence model. So, there is a lot of these parameters that you have to do it right. And so, one of the things that comes up and in contrast to the uh, single phase flow is this acceleration term also. Now, what would be the acceleration term if you have a horizontal pipe versus a vertical pipe? Physical. No, no. Laminar turbulent is whether it is a what is the velocity, superficial velocity, which is the churn flow or not. That is a separate issue. But what else is there? Because as I said, that the flow will not take place unless you have a pressure gradient. All right. So what happens is in a horizontal flow, the effect of gravity is negligible. But the effect of gravity is so significant that it causes the acceleration and the length of fully development that you have in case of even laminar flow to a fully developed flow that takes a tremendous amount of length. You know, and these pipes are very small that you cannot neglect the effect of acceleration in your real experiment. And so you cannot expect to do that in the answer. Otherwise, you will get a really bad answer. Because, you know, if you had a luxury of using a pipe, you know, which is hundreds of meters long, maybe you can get away with it if you are interested only in the downstream a small region. Otherwise, you cannot do that. So, that is why it becomes important. But this calculation is a lot more easier, you know, if you have a single phase flow in a vertical pipe. So, anyway, you know, these are, you can find, you know, these expressions, they look kind of bad, but they are easily derivable and I am not going to go over it. This is a void fraction. Anybody remembers what this is? No, this is alpha is a void fraction. What is this? What? Yeah, dry fraction. And that is the mass quality. And so, you know, you know rest of the terms. Okay. So, it is easily derivable. So anyway, you can continue and you know, this is for an inclined pipe at an inclination of theta degrees, the effect of gravity. And these are all very simple expression you can derive actually. This is a mass quality, this is the void fraction if you want to relate it to and rho g and rho l. So these are very straightforward expressions. And then of course, this is the most difficult part that is the frictional pressure drop and most important. Because when you have a, as I said, the horizontal pipe, you know, coming from somewhere other than other part of Middle East, coming through Pakistan, which may not happen now, but and then all comes all the way to Amritsar, right? You have 2,000 miles of pipe with 20 meters diameter. What is the most important? The friction drop. So that will de determine how much force you require to push it. Okay. So, that is where there are all kind of parameters that are done. The most widely used and I think most credible among all the work that has been done, I do not know if anybody has heard of it, is called the Lockhart Martinelli parameter. So, Lockhart Martinelli parameter that was done in late 40s or early 50s, that remains a gold standard. People have improved on it. But I think that is still that is the gold standard in this. Okay. Now, this n is a Blasius coefficient, you know, whose values are given downstream. And this relation that we have, which is a phi sub z is the g is the gas, uh, 
gaseous phase uh, friction coefficient with with a, with only single phase and so the zero means as a single phase and the other one without zero means that it is a mixed phase of fluid and liquid and liquid and gas so you can go over all this you know as i said you know this is something that is very straightforward so long as you know what x is and what uh, delta pf for example is the friction and the other one is written do means that gas only o means only so you can keep on going here there is not much uh, but these are all given in the handbooks you know so i am not you can have circular pipe parallel plates squares any kind of pipe you want and have relations now the for the if you want to compare it with all these results with the single phase then of course you have the laminar flow with a poisley model and the main thing is that this all can translate where depending on whether you have a turbulent flow transitional flow laminar flow all of this can translate into the moody diagram the rest of it is not useful so once you have the moody diagram and all of you probably know about it and actually if you like and you want to assign a student a problem ask the person that compute the flow around here so give this Reynolds number on a pipe and give this friction coefficient and says that come up with a f and i can guarantee you that he will not be able to get the right answer because this is a transition region and none of the model works well you have a four equation ssc transition model you have a three equation kkl omega model none of them works well even for a simple pipe flow so this problem will remain with us for another 100 years to fill in this gap rest of it is okay we don't know how to work with it so there is a stability theory is all kind of stuff people are working on it's very rich subject but that's the way it is right now at the state of the art but one thing that hasn't happened and this is something to think about there is no equivalent moody chart for a multi phase moody chart doesn't exist for even water and air which can capture all the six patterns that i showed you it doesn't really exist even if you consider a smooth pipe and even if you consider only this laminar part and going only the last curve in this thing not the other curves with a plan of toughness Okay, so there are all these models people have developed. Actually, I was uh, in one of the exams, you know, for one of these students uh, from some university, and his whole thesis was to improve the Churchill model, the master's thesis, and that also based on some empiricism, not ANSYS. Okay, but I could not fail him because they would have never invited me back. Okay. <laughs> So I told him some suggestions to improve it. What he did is he fixed just some uh, some constant. You know, I don't remember what the constant was, and then just kept on plotting it by using some calculator and submitted it as a master thesis for MTech. So what I'm saying is that all these things are not are not a joke. People have really worked on them. I'm now since Lockhart, Lockhart, uh, Martinelli, which was done in 1948-49, this guy at uh, 20 years later has published his work and people call it Churchill model. Okay, so there are other models. So I will show you this. The other one that is from our Indian people. This is the one that is the most important one. Lockhart, Mar Martinelli model, and this is the gold standard. And so what you see the skin friction 
uh, for the laminar and the gas, our liquid and the gas is a function of the pressure gradient, which is the total friction factor and that of gas and the liquid. Okay, and this, as I said, is a gold standard. And the value of n depends on the whether the flow is turbulent, 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 turbulent means that both the liquid and the air are turbulent. And laminar turbulent means that one of them is laminar, one of them is turbulent, and then the other one is the other way around, and then other one is a laminar, laminar. So people have done all these correlations, got some answers, and all these formulas are actually easy to derive, and this is in the original paper of Rogard and Martin. So you can go over all this. I don't want to go over. There's not much physics in it except some fixing. This interfacial pressure gradient is very important. Now the ultimate thing that I want to emphasize here: there is a one actually model after what is called Swami and Jain model. Have anybody heard of Swami and Jain model? Somewhere here. I Yeah, Swami and Jan model. So there are people, you know, a couple of these people have also computed okay, in 1976. I wanted to show this because Jan Saab is here. <laughs> that there is a model like that. Uh -huh. oh, okay. I don't know where they are. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. So you can see there's a lot of contribution that Indian people have made. You know. Okay. But as I said, the, among all these models, I personally think that Lockhart Martinelli parameters are remain the gold standards, and everybody else has tried to improve on it. But the one thing that I want to again emphasize this X. In this case, it's a logarithm, logarithmic plot, just like a Moody diagram. So it's a log-log plot, and this is where you have the factor that is related to the, uh, uh, the friction coefficient. And you can see that all the experimental data falls onto it. So this is the beauty of using non-dimensional parameters and coming up with the right kind of parameter. So the x actually is an important parameter, which is a Lockhart Martinelli parameter. And the beauty of it at work, in, which was in 1950s, was that a large number amount of data could collapse that a users in, in, the, uh, in the engineering community could use it for those conditions and get the answer that they are looking for. So if you know the Lockhart Martinelli parameter, for that particular flow, and you can see that whether it fits into what kind of chart it is, whether it's a plug flow, slug flow, or a VP flow, or whatever it is, then you can say for that particular flow, this is the X, and this is the amount of friction that you will get, and that is useful in the design process. So you can see, you know, there are other collapse of other data that you can look at. People have improved on it, and so this is just to show you that these things do work. Right. So basically, the message here, and I went through all these slides because there is not much into it except you know showing you know that there are a lot of models exist. People are still trying to develop models, but uh, I think that contribution is limited. And among these, Lockett Martinelli is the best. You can try to, but if you really want to contribute something, take the Baker map and then change the superficial velocity and change the geometric parameters what they are needed and try to run ANSYS and see that what kind of flow is obtained. And if you can completely reproduce the Baker map in whatever way, nobody has done it so far. So that will be a real contribution. But if you take a, one of these models and you know try to tweak around some coefficients, I think that is really Going to be insignificant contribution, you know, to the literature. So let us close the whole thing today. So we are on a schedule tomorrow.